Well, we're going to start with the second part. One of the things that Robert and I do well, complementing each other, is that Robert goes to the concepts and I go to the trenches with the people and working with, uh, with the people on the ground and doing clinical work. So I'm going to mainly talk about, um, about this larger conception of um, vegetalismo as a medical system. When we're talking about vegetalismo, we're talking about a tradition in the jungle, in the upper Peruvian Amazon, that has um, indigenous uh, input, but also Western input. It's a mestizo tradition that started at the end of the 1800s uh, with the rubber boom and, um, and the migration of um, indigenous communities too into the cities. So um, we're talking about a full medical system that has many branches and many ways, but uh, holds together a particular cosmology um, with variations, you know, in shamanistic traditions, we always have different uh, ways of doing. I talk about um, shamanisms, you know, to call it in some way, not shamanism, <coughs> because there are so many, so many differences. Um, so within this medical system, in, in vegetalismo, we have three pillars. One is the use of plants for purging that Robert mentioned before. Um, and uh, at Takiwas, where I was working, and I have been working many times going back and forth for the last 13 <coughs> years, um, and where we work with um, addicts, we use a lot of plants for purging, and a lot of methods to purge um, for the detox phase, but also throughout the treatment. So um, there are certain plants for purging uh, the se genitals and sexual memories and um, abuse um, of any sort. So there are also other plants to purge the liver and memories associated with that. And um, then there are other plants to purge, um, to do a, a, a general purging and also energetic purging of any um, any energetic um, ingestions that are thrown by, uh, by other people with their thoughts onto you. So there, there are var varieties of plants and methods to detox the clients and to detox oneself. When we're, what is a therapist down there in Takiwasi, one has to go through everything. <laughs> Uh, not only because one learns a lot, but also one charges oneself a lot also in, with, with the work. It's a very uh, deep commitment to be down there working. Then we have the ayahuasca ceremonies. All clients that are there go through ayahuasca ceremonies once per week. Um, they are there uh, for nine months treatment. Um, so they get around 16 to 20 ayahuasca ceremonies throughout the whole uh, treatment. They have integration of experiences in the book and also individually. Um, Follow-ups, they have individual processing with therapists, but also, as I said, group processing is very important also to implement the, um, the insights in daily life and for that, we live in community, they have the living community with each other. We are a therapeutic community. And then uh, there is a plant diet. So within the nine months of treatment, there are three main um, diets, three or four that, that are done, um, that mark the end of a trimester of work and the beginning of a new trimester. And they really mark like a, like a, a step in the treatment um, where you, you can see a synthesis that's made during that retreat time and then like an emergence of new perspectives and possibilities to work deeper the next trimester. Um, I was very interested in, in studying deeper what happens with plant diets as here, we in the West know much more about what happens with ayahuasca and uh, the substance 
would love to bring back, like the to bring bring from down there. You know, the perspective that we are talking about a full medical system that has a cosmology and approach, uh, and that has other methods as well that are all complementary and they weave each other together. So. This is the, the plant diet is a little explored topic by researchers. And despite traditional being the main vehicle uh, for energetic preparation and access to knowledge, knowledge for the curandero and the apprentice. My tongue hasn't unraveled yet because I you were living for a year and a half. I'm Chilean originally. <laughs> English is kind of difficult right now, so you guys please be patient with me. I'm trying my best. And I can switch to Spanish whenever you want. <laughs> um, so this is important. A healer, curandero, down there. Curandero, we call them. We don't call them shamans. You know that. So the curanderos like have to keep doing diet constantly during their work to strengthen their bodies, to protect themselves from vulnerabilities because they're dealing with um, spiritual sicknesses, not only uh, physical sicknesses, right? Uh, and there is a lot of sorcery going down there, not only down there. In any shamanistic tradition, there is sorcery happening. Um, and that's a reality for them, and they have to protect themselves, fortify their bodies, and not take in the sickness of the patient. So, um, so he won't be able to cure or won't be able to manage the energies properly if he doesn't diet. Um, then, um, he, he, um, the plant diets are very important in that it's the, the, the process through which the, the, the curandero is able to understand and get installed in his body the energetic structure and the knowledge of that particular plant. So it's a, a, a period of uh, knowing and deepening the intimacy, the communion with that plant. Uh, the, I, I call it the crowning. The crowning of a plant diet process is the plant giving you the song that calls that power through the voice through the transformed body of the healer um, and is being able then to be used onto somebody uh, for healing purposes. Okay. That doesn't mean that if we don't, if we go through diet pro uh, processes, we can also like receive songs. And I'm going to tell you a story about um, an addict in, in recovery who got a song. Um, it's very interesting. So, who, how many of you know what a plant diet is? From here, please raise your hand. Okay. Um, these are temporary retreats in the jungle, in the monte, we call that, uh, with a variable duration of eight days to up to six months in isolation, with ritualized ingestion of plant concoctions or frescos soap plants under a strict dietary regimen and norms of physical and psycho-emotional management. The purpose is healing, self-reflection, knowledge. For the apprentices, as I said before, the gates to the spiritual realm, realms open and the contact with the spirit of the plant diet can bring particular knowledge associated to the healing use of the plant, etc. So, um, in Takiwasi, we have uh, plant diet retreats that last for eight days. Um, for the addicts, as I explained, but there are also seminars open to the public, you know, to come from anywhere. Um, and you can go through a process that has, uh, it's like, it's a seminar, it's like 10 days, you can go there. Um, after selection process because basically we need like some physical conditions and emotional conditions to work with. Uh, if there are tough physical conditions, it's not, it's not appropriate to do plant diets. And uh, there are a lot of criteria, criteria for exclusion, 
We can talk about that if you're interested later. Um, but basically, you go through a perch initially, then you go through ayahuasca ceremony, and then you enter into this eight days diet, where you describe <coughs> the plan um, following certain criteria. And the wonderful thing about Takiwasi is that they have 20 years of experience in identifying what do these plants do at, at the psycho-emotional level, psycho-spiritual level as well. Um, when you go to Curandero in the jungle, they mainly talk about the mind and the body as undivided. So they, they address your body con conditions, your physical conditions. And, um, and it's fabulous because you can have amazing diets. <laughs> you know? the, the interesting thing is that when, when you accrue also these distinctions for Westerners particularly, you can also prescribe certain plants for particular like, psychological conditions or existential moments in your life and then be pretty effective. I have been able, in the past year and a half, I have followed many, many diet processes, uh, but I was able, in this, I was uh, counting, and the past a year and a half, I was able to accompany 45 people in, uh, in their processes, 10 day processes, um, full accompaniment, and then probably other 25 partially. So this is like 70 people going through uh, processes. I think my mathematics are more or less okay. Yeah, and, and you can see um, incredible therapeutic um, breakthroughs. So it's really powerful. Um, the interesting thing is that um, you start going progressively. Imagine, do you want to show you? This is not the right um, slideshow I wanted to show you. I brought the wrong cable. <laughs> so this is from a conference that we did in Vancouver together. But I want to show you from here. This is from Guillermo Hanama. Here is an old curandero. He's a uh, dietero. He, is, he specializes in the plant diet. This is me years ago, very young, like learning how to harvest chagruna. And this is a camaranaco tree, one of the um, plants that you can die. This is a Brunswick and apprentice a harvesting camaranaco. This is mukura. This is the way that you prepare a fresco of mukura. Can you see it? The scrapes? Mm -hmm. And then you soak it in water and then you strain it. These are tambos for diet. So basically, this is the structure where you, where you go. Um, there is, you know, a, a little something to sleep on, and then you have a mosquito net, thank God. <laughs> then you have a hammock. And what you do is you, um, you drink your plant. It depends on the plant, you know. If you drink one, <coughs> twice, or three times per day, or sometimes every day, in a, uh, every, every other day, for example, with chirik sanango, which is pretty strong on the body, you normally uh, drink once every other day. Um, and then you're in isolation, in the middle of the jungle. Um, you don't eat any salt or spices, you're just eating ingiri, which is plantain, boiled or grilled. And then you eat rice or yuca sometimes. And now they are like, introducing also oatmeal. Uh, as a replacement because it has more, um, thank you, it has more, um, uh, well, more nutrients, right? Um, uh, traditional, traditionally is white rice, <laughs> boiled white rice. Then in longer diets, you know, after like diets that are like a month or more, uh, you're allowed also to eat some protein, uh, particular particular fish, like boquichico, those fishes that only eat like little tiny mi microscopic things, not the fat, fatty ones, those you're able to eat because uh, those the plants like. Mm -hmm. 
that's the reason, right? You can you are also allowed to eat chicken uh, raised in the jungle, right? Freely. Mm -hmm. um, but this is very simple. You are at both, like within a sensory deprivation situation, because there is nobody but but like the people who go there to give you the plant and the food there. You're not allowed to talk, you're not allowed to go outside, just like go to the river, take a shower, like a bath in the river once per day or twice per day, per day. but you're not allowed to wander around. Especially at Tekiwasi, the, the rules are very strict. Um, we normally have 20 to 25 people diving simultaneously, and the tambos are very close to each other, though they don't see each other. So um, uh, people are encouraged not to engage in any conversation with anybody, just like to keep this as a retreat, a personal retreat, in silence. And then um, during, during the eight days diet, there is an initial interview for the person to understand deeper what's his motive or her motivation to do the, the plant diet. Um, then we have uh, a meeting with the curanderos and with the psychologists and um, other people in order uh, and other therapists in order to decide what's the right plan for the people, for the, for the person. And then we do a follow-up three times during that week. Uh, so we go up to the chakra and just sit with the person and resonate with whatever the person needs to process at the moment. Right? And then there's a closing um, session that's done afterwards with a lot of indications uh, in order to, to take care of the POST diet. The POST diet is key at the level of this cosmology, this medical system. The plant installs itself in the person properly in the time of the POST diet. So you really have to take care of that period. Uh, with dietary uh, restrictions, but also energetic restrictions, including um, being very careful with sexuality. So I'm going to talk about that, but later, because I want to go to the need of, of what I was doing with this. Um, I was interested um, in... I have been going to Takiwasi for like for 14 years, right? Like for different stages. And every time that a client went through a, through a diet, there was definitely a total transformation in that client. Um, you could be like walking very slowly um, in the therapeutic process. And then a diet happened, the person changed physically, energetically, openness, and the, uh, uh, the changes lasted much longer than with ayahuasca ceremonies. Um, the whole thing is how do you work with the grace period, because there is a grace period not only with the psychotropic substances, but also with plant diets. Any work in expanded states of consciousness has an, a period of grace this is Stan Groff's term to say that you're functioning still for a while in a state of um, processing like similarly to the way that you were processing and approaching inner and outer things as when you were in the expanded state of consciousness. So very important not to make big decisions because that period is going to close or it's going to get integrated in your ordinary life differently after a while, okay? So um, the, the whole trick, you know, of like working with these diets with uh, people with addiction was to be able to do good integration processes afterwards, right? But there is like, a, they really catalyze uh, change. Um, so, I said, okay, I'm gonna just look into this experience, practical experience of Takiwasi, and work with four plants that they use most often. 
and the four plants are Ushpawasha, Ahosacha, um, Palos, and Coca. They use approximately 12 plants for diets more often. They also combine them. So it's not it, there is a main plant, and then there is a, often a secondary plant given to a person. And normally, a secondary plant balances out certain aspects that the one plant doesn't touch. Uh, in traditional medicine, you can also like uh, diet up to five, six plants simultaneously. But it's very good when you're starting to just like work and commune with one plant. Um, so that you don't confuse the teachings. So I'm going to just tell you what are the properties of these four plants and then tell you some, some examples. I, I, I have 150 hours of interviews to transcribe and analyze yet yeah, because we just came back two months ago. So these are just um, some of the cases that I remember and that I was listened to again on from the recordings to, to uh, um, offer you tonight. Uh, but there is much more to do, more work to do. So the Ajo Sacha. Ajo Sacha. I don't have a plan of Ajo Sacha here. No. Um, the Ajo Sacha is, uh, Ajo is garlic. And uh, Sacha is a uh, last name given to many plants that uh, means from the mountain, del monte. It's not, it's not really mountain, but I don't know, uh, I don't know exactly what the, the transcription, the translation would be monte. Anyway. So garlic of the mountain, that's a solar plant, it's masculine, and one uses the root of it. It has a strong garlic flavor and smell. It's really strong. Um, it's used in people in need to strengthen masculine properties, self-esteem, asserting themselves within group contexts, willpower, decision-making processes, planning for the future. Future gives mental clarity. Okay. Then I we have Ushpawasha, which is a water plant, and both of these, Ajo Sacha and Ushpawasha, are given usually to people who are starting their diet processes, whose diet is the first one, maybe, um, just because there are, there are different strengths in the plants, and these ones are really deep, but they are not heavy physically, and they are not they are not going to crack you open. Mm -hmm. Very important. So Ushpawasha is a water plant. It's feminine. It's called the memory of the heart. Um, and one uses the root and the trunk. It has a strong smell and taste of decomposed something. It's, it's, a, um, it's deeper. It's deeper than a hosacha. So many people do this when mm -hmm. one comes with a little um, cup. It's used in people to experientially remember and metabolize early and middle childhood experiences, promotes uh, emotional catharsis, mm -hmm. it connects with one's emotions if one is too mental. It can take the person into experiential memories in the womb, that's the extreme two that we have seen, as well as to rescue the larger emotional containers in early experiences. So it's basically, um, it's experiential in that uh, it's not that you remember, it's like you are re-experiencing emotionally certain things that you have totally forgotten about or you, you re-experience it with another angle to it. So probably people here who have done ayahuasca ceremonies also recognize that that's something that may happen in, um, within ceremony con ceremonial context. The interesting thing here is that there is a process of depuration that happens as you are in, in the plant diet. A physical, mental, you're just like calming down and detoxifying, you sweat a lot at the beginning, you're not having any salt. 
Um, uh, and you go slowly into what I call a state of transparency. So the weight of your of your body and the weight of your mind and the weight of your, weight of your emotions start going down and melting, and then you start being open. And somebody somebody brought here like being expanded, like you feel that the limits and boundaries of yourself are blurry and this and the sense of identity expands naturally that's that's this is a little uh, side thing but uh, I'm pretty sure that this um, ionic balance between sodium and potas potassium mm -hmm. in the cell that allows uh, the membrane of a cell to be stable right? If, if there is a correct balance, then there is individuality. The membrane of the cell is like stronger. I know probably my friend here that's a physician could explain this better. But um, the, what happens when you take off all sodium and you increase the potassium is that you must have an imbalance at that your ionic level. That it's interesting because then if you like what you have emotionally and also um, your approach to things start being like dreamlike, like your sense of identity just blurs and at the same time you feel very connected to yourself, <coughs> very connected with things. So there is a parallel there, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but something that we need to keep uh, studying for sure. So I talked about the Ushpawasha. I'm going to talk also about the palos. Have you heard about the palos? Palos, we talk with, we call the palos in vegetalismo the, the barks of large trees. So many of the rules are made with palos, and we call them palos fuertes, mm -hmm. uh, strong palos, right? So palos is a preparation done with seven to ten different barks of tall trees. Uh, it has masculine properties, it's, it's a tonic. It promotes the development of internal structure, solidity, direction, and strength in the mind-body complex. It's, it's, it's used in people with fragile mental or physical structures, with low energy, reinforces a sense of woundedness in oneself of environment. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth plant that I was studying is coca, that most of you have uh, know. You know There's a master plant from the Andes that was introduced and, adapt and adapted to the jungle climate many de decades ago, um, maybe centuries. Coca is feminine and masculine. It's earth and water, sun and air. It teaches balance of the feminine and the masculine aspects within oneself, promotes integration of unconscious material, promotes a sense of inner equilibrium, opens up the portals of plant teachings. Uh, this is very, um, I, I don't have time to tell you all the stories, but um, I have seen uh, many people die in coca, and in the, in the coca, like invariably, like brings dreams, very strong dreams, which is also a characteristic of the plant diet in general. Like in general, you enter this dreamlike -like state slowly and progressively, and then you have strong dreams, you start like um, sleeping less and less, you're very aware of the surroundings. Um, and this is a thought I didn't complete before, uh, compared to ayahuasca ceremonies, it allows you to really slowly control and transform your body as you are progressing uh, in the communion with the plant and the teachings that it gives you in a way that, um, that you, um, you can make connections with <coughs> conscious control and unconscious control, but you are advancing step by step. So the integration I have seen the integration is easier in that context and it, it can get deeper 
it's not the and then well, what do I do with this? It really goes deep. Okay? So the garlic of the mountain, the ajo sach, I'm gonna give you some examples of what I have seen um, in patients, right? So this is used in people who need to strengthen masculine properties, self-esteem, asserting themselves, etc. Um, this is Swiss person in recovery from uh, cocaine. Uh, he's 27 years old, parents divorced. Uh, he's over concerned with his physical comfort and being uh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. and constant anxiety uh, to uh, lose social opportunities. He comes from a very upper class um, social condition in Switzerland. And this is his second treatment. It's very demanding, critical to living conditions at the center that are very simple. I mean, it's not as simple as what you saw, but it's very simple. Um, it, he had, has difficulty staying in the treatment and basically fights all the therapists constantly. Um, so his, this is his first diet and his intention, so first diet is done like three months after uh, uh, going into treatment. So his intention is to gain structure, to be more responsible of his own life, to become firmer, more grounded. The first diet reinforces his will to stay at the center. This is, uh, this is very important. He starts to, um, to just define himself and define the fact that this is good for him. I was listening to the recordings and the conditions that make me uh, relapse. So how can I prevent this? And he went into detail, just like planning and seeing himself into different possibilities uh, where he could prevent the relapse. This is Ajo Sacha, this is just one example. Then we have Ushpa, uh, the emotional memory. 42 years old, from Spain, uh, cocaine addicted, he's addicted to cocaine and alcohol. He had an alcoholic father, a very devouring mother. This is his fourth treatment. Um, and this is the first time that he was, okay? So he has also issues with victimization. His childhood was filled with fear, with shame. Uh, and this is his first diet. After three months, he had to go through a lot of detoxification uh, and then like rootedness as well because he was just up there somewhere. Um, his intention was to embrace his inner child. Um, but as I say, within this, a frame of victimizing himself, right? So um, I, the first visit up in the chapter, his face was literally transfigured. I was, uh, I couldn't believe he was the same person. His face had changed, and he looked like a child, very clean, like a child. He had during the times. Um, I, I had not seen him from like a Thursday to a Monday, right? Uh, and in between, he ha he started drinking the blood, and he also was drinking. A, he had a first ayahuasca ceremony, so he had strong dreams and memories of having fun with his parents on vacation times, being taken care of, enjoying the outdoors with them. So suddenly, he started reframing his childhood and, and seeing experientially that there was much more to his child, childhood to what he uh, was like able to remember, right? Like, and wow, he was taken care of, right? And he, there was a joy in that face that I saw throughout the whole diet because it deepened. So he was like just bringing back reviewing all his life and all the times where he felt strong and felt taken care of. Um, there was also uh, reconciliation with his, his 
uh, passed and he wrote a lot of letters to uh, his parents at that time. So um, he came out with a deep experience of gratitude. Um, he had to work a lot more. I mean, that was just the, the beginning. Um, but it really, it was a whole process of like taking responsibility for his own life. He also came from an upscale family in Spain, had everything he needed, money to throw through the windows, and, uh, and never really uh, earned his own life. Now he's back, he finished the treatment, and we're gonna have a Skype interview soon. And he is, uh, he has separated from his family in terms of business, and he's doing his own stuff, which is fabulous. So this is Ushpa Washam. Uh, this is Palos, uh, remember the, seven, the tonic, mm -hmm. 7 to 10 barks, uh, and coca. French, 20, 28 years old, uh, addicted to heroin. The father died of overdose of heroin too, so he had that in his story. And he also had in his story uh, being a year immobile after a motorcycle accident a few years ago. Um, he had no memory of childhood experiences, nothing. Um, felt physically numbed and was very interested in metaphysical themes. He was a talented musician, a musician and uh, was already six months in treatment. So he had done one diet before. This is the second diet. So his intention was to recover his body as a tool to feel, to enjoy, to know what one needs. So he recognized that he was totally numb, that uh, I was listening again to the recording, and he said to me, I took a heroin. I was 10 hours in the same posture without feeling pain, without nothing, not aware of my needs of moving or anything, just there for 10 hours. My body is totally numb to, to everything. Um, so he had been starting uh, with the work with um, like using his senses, just like going there and grabbing the plants and touching them. Uh, with the palos, he had extreme experiences with sound uh, during meditative states. He uh, heard constantly polyphony of low sounds and went to strong, deep relaxation states. He felt he could hear sounds of the body decontracturing, decontracting. He was aware of insects and colors around and astonished by the color of a, of a butterfly of, or, or to the, um, he was telling me the word, last night I went out to see the moon, there were five fireflies, so beautiful. You know, the sense of marvel, you know, just recovering it. And um, also the feeling of the sacred, of unity with the universe, um, the awakening of curiosity. He also became aware of different parts of the body, of his breathing, pain in the foot, in the bones. Normal when, normally when you diet bios, you have pains in your structure, in your skeleton, stru skeletal structure. Uh, it, it, it's hurtful. I mean, uh, some people need massage also during the diet because it's, it's really strong. Um, it can be very strong. Um, he also started feeling physically heavy. Um, got in contact with deep anxiety and his wanting to have everything now and was haunting during the diet also with the thought of making money by uh, trafficking, doing drug trafficking in the future because he was owing money, a lot of money. He was like, and he said, it was haunting. I was like two, three days with that thought on me. And this is also something that happens um, in diet processes that you get haunted by one thing. Like, and, and it's not important anymore. It happened 20 years ago and you're like, oh my god, I need to go back and tell this person this thing. And, um, and you process the whole thing emotionally. You metabolize things that have not been rounded up in your life, right? So
So he was, um, hi. <laughs> <laughs> he was doing that. It, it was interesting because he had a very strong dream where he was going with a friend to a fabulous natural place where he was astonished just looking at the beauty of the natural place and taking it all in. And then suddenly he got all concerned that the bus that transported him to the natural place was gone. And how was he going to go back to the city where he lived? Okay. Which is very important at the therapeutic level. You know, symbolizing you know the no, no return to the original state, right? But then the need to move forward into the building of a, a inner home, an order home that's different. Open for questions. Hey, do you remember? You remember you mentioned sorcery in the Amazon, and I was wondering. Do those uh, challenges that use sorcery use ayahuasca? And if they do, how are they using it against other people? Uh, okay, so there are many approaches to that question. It's complex, right? But yes, and during ayahuasca ceremonies, people who are called sorcerers or brujos, you know, can do things. Like, they can work you, right? Like, there are the, traditionally, um, there are things that you can do, like daños. You can send daños to somebody because you, you know, they, because someone hires somebody to do a daño to harm somebody. Okay? Those daños can be like from subtle things to just causing death of somebody. And um, there are also amarres. So if you are in love with somebody and the other person is not in love with you. Then you bring a picture, and, and then they do an energetic liaison between the person and, and you. Um, it's uh, very interesting because in in the cities in the Amazon, um, the people really believe that these things are, exist, and you can see the curings. You can see symptoms. For example. Bernd Brabeck de, de Mori, he's an ethnomusicologist from Austria. He's married to a Shipibo woman. And he tells in one of his writings that they always have a um, harmonic, harmonious, um, matrimonial, how do you say it? Harmonious marriage. Marriage, 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 right? And then, like, suddenly they started, like, almost hitting each other, fighting. It was just very strange. They were, like, not interested in taking care of their children anymore. You know, they were wondering what was happening. Um, so they went to see a, a curandero, and the curandero had a ceremony. He saw somebody had done an amarre to him to separate them. Right? So um, yeah, the, the curandero worked with certain plants and with certain uh, icaros and prayers, and then it was restored back. Like what, how much is suggestion, what not, I don't know. 